If you're the type of person that wants a tough and capable off-roader, but with a little bit more luxury than the Jeep Wrangler or Ford Bronco, then the new Land Rover Defender might be your option. It was updated in 2020 to still have the same off-road capabilities as the previous generations, but without feeling quite as utilitarian as those ones. So does the new Defender live up to its off-road heritage? Let's go for a drive and find out. You can get the Defender with one of three engines. There's a 2.0-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder with about 300 horsepower. There's a 3.0-liter inline-six, turbocharged again. Or for 2022, you can get this Defender with a 5.0-liter supercharged V8. And that one produces a little over 500 horsepower. Unfortunately, this one is not that one. Under the hood of this Defender is a 3.0-liter inline-six, again turbocharged, but it also has a little bit of help from a 48 volt mild hybrid system. The total output is 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Like many other mild hybrids, you cannot drive on electricity alone. The hybrid system is only there to help the engine with acceleration and power when it's really needed, and a little bit with the efficiency of the engine. Speaking of which, the acceleration is really brisk for something this size. I was actually quite surprised when I put my foot down and just noticed how quickly this big SUV accelerates from a stop. Officially, I believe it's rated at around six and a half seconds. But when you're just cruising around town or on highways, the engine's RPMs don't need to climb past 3000. In fact, most of the time, I haven't seen them climb even past 2500. And when you're actually cruising, like how I am right now, the engine is spinning at around 1,000 RPMs. It's basically idling. So what I'm trying to say is that it has loads of torque and loads of power well below the 3,000 mark. Officially, the Defender 90 P400 is rated for 13.5 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 10.8 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. I managed to average 12.6 liters per 100 kilometers during my time with the SUV. Swapping cogs is an 8-speed automatic transmission. This is sourced by ZF, which makes some of the best 8-speed automatics in the world. This 8-speed is no different. Shifts are smooth and relatively quick. The programming was not designed to allow for lightning fast shifts like in BMW M vehicles, but for an SUV like this, they're reasonably quick enough. On paved roads, the steering is actually normal. It is a little bit light, especially on center, but as soon as you start to turn it, then it firms up nicely and progressively. The great thing though, is that you do not have to constantly give the steering little inputs just to stay in a straight line, like how you would in a Jeep Wrangler or a Jeep Gladiator, for example. You can easily let go of the steering wheel and the Defender drives nice and straight. When you do encounter some turns in the road, the Defender does lean in through the corners. I mean, it is a big and heavy SUV after all, but it stays nicely composed. The air suspension doesn't make it feel all floppy and like as though it's going to tip over or anything like that. It feels stable and it gives you enough confidence to go at a pretty moderate pace around corners. If you decide to take the Defender on roads that are not paved, like how I am right now, then you start to see just how easy it is for this SUV and how capable it is out here in the wilderness. 
Now granted, right now I am on a forest service road and it's actually a pretty well maintained forest service road at that. So for the Defender, it feels like as though you're just playing a video game on the easiest setting and your character is at max level. It's super easy for this SUV. But when things get rougher and tougher, the Defender is up for the task. Some of the tools that it has to tackle the rough stuff include a two-speed transfer case, a locking center differential, fully independent multi-link suspension, available air suspension, underbody protection, and terrain response to off-road drive modes. You can select the appropriate off-road drive mode to the conditions, or the Terrain Response 2 programming can automatically detect the terrain and adjust various vehicle parameters accordingly. The SUV can also maintain a set speed when off-roading with the All-Terrain Control program. It's like cruise control, but for slow speed off-roading. With the air suspension, the Defender 90 has an approach angle of 37.5 degrees, a departure angle of 40 degrees, and a breakover angle of 30.7 degrees. Maximum ride height with the air suspension is 11.4 inches, and the water wading depth is 35.4 inches. Maximum towing with the inline six engine is 7,700 pounds. The ride of the Land Rover Defender is actually really good. The air suspension really does a fantastic job of absorbing all of the bumps, whether it's on paved roads or off the beaten path. Also, this particular Defender has really thick sidewall tires, so that further aids in providing comfort. One of the first things that you'll notice as soon as you start driving the Defender, especially on highways, is all of the wind noise that intrudes into the cabin. So there's some coming from the mirrors, but a lot of it is coming from the roof rack and also from that box on the side. Now, I imagine if you don't option your Defender with that roof rack and the side box, it will be a little bit quieter, but it still is essentially a box on wheels. A nice curvaceous box on wheels, but still a box on wheels nonetheless. Tire noise is not too bad. It is evident, again, at highway speeds, but not as loud as the wind noise. And as for the engine, it's pretty quiet. I mean, obviously, when you put your foot down, you really hear it, but it doesn't sound particularly special per se. I'm assuming with the V8, that will sound really nice. With this new Defender, you have a choice as to how many doors it comes with. So obviously, this one is a two-door, but you can have it as a four-door or as a four-door with a lot more cargo space. The interior is a little bit more luxurious feeling than the previous generation, so not as utilitarian, but a lot of the materials feel very tough and like as though they can actually take punishment from your big boots when you go off-roading. Obviously, with the carpet, you can take them out and just hose down the floor, and the rest of this material that's on the center console, all across the dashboard, and on the door panels, it feels pretty tough and actually like it's going to be pretty easy to clean if it gets muddy. As for the cabin, all of the controls are physical buttons and they all have very satisfying clicks to them. And you do have rotary knobs for the temperature, which also double as heated and ventilated seats if equipped. The center one, or the one that's closest to the driver, also triples as a drive mode selector. The only thing that has me scratching my head a little bit is the placement of the volume knob because it's way out here next to the passenger's knee. I'm six foot four and I have really long arms and yet it's quite a bit of a stretch for me. I guess that's the last bit of real estate that's left on the center console. Maybe that's why they placed it all the way out there. I don't know. In terms of seat space for the driver and the passenger, there's more than enough legroom, just fine, headroom, more than plentiful. As for visibility, you sit really high up, almost as high as a full-size pickup truck. So out the front, more than enough visibility, out the side, just fine. And out the back, if the headrests get in your way, then you can just pop the mirror upwards and you get a rear-facing camera. However, the blind zones are pretty big in this Defender. So over my left shoulder, the B pillar is pretty thick and over my right shoulder, that box that's outside blocks a lot of the back window real estate. And it also blocks a little bit of the view out the mirror. 
but thankfully the Land Rover Defender does have blind spot sensors and they work pretty well. So with that, let's go check out the back seats now. Getting into the back is not that difficult, but it could test your patience. So you just flip the backrest forward and then hold on to this little button on the side to electronically move the seat forward. And while you're waiting, you're probably gonna get wet if it's raining. There, now it's done. The annoying thing, oh, the annoying thing when you're back here is that you now have to hold onto the button for this front seat to move back because if you let go it just stops so you got to hold on to it and wait a little bit more but once you're actually back here it's actually pretty spacious this seat is in my driving position and my knees are just gently rubbing up against the back but I don't feel squished at all Headroom is okay. My hair is brushing just ever so slightly up against the headliner, but I don't feel squished at all. Also, it's pretty airy in here, not only because of the panoramic sunroof, but also these little teeny tiny windows over here. And also, of course, these windows are pretty big, so long as you don't sit on that side with the box hanging outside of it. It just looks very dark on that side, but it's very bright on this side. These back seats are not heated on this particular vehicle, but you do have separate climate controls and quite a few USB ports, and you also have grab handles to hold on when you go off-roading. The trunk is predictably on the small side in the Defender 90. It has just 297 liters of space behind the rear seats, and 1,263 liters of space with the rear seats folded. Bear in mind, however, there is a bit of a step between the floor of the trunk and the folded rear seats. The 2022 Land Rover Defender 90 P400 starts at $79,800 Canadian. As equipped, it came to $94,520 Canadian. Unfortunately, the price has increased for the 2023 Land Rover Defender. The 90 Series P400 now starts at $82,750 Canadian and can easily go up into the six-figure range with all of the options that are available on it. For the price, the Defender is equipped as it should be. The usual luxury features of heated seats, heated steering wheel, leather upholstery, dual-zone climate control, Meridian audio sound system, wireless phone charging, keyless entry and push-button start, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto are all there, among many other features. Optional features include the panoramic sunroof or a folding fabric roof. There's various wheel designs, a heated windshield with heated washer jets, heated rear seats, the aforementioned air suspension with adaptive dampers, a three-zone climate control system, a head-up display, and a vast majority of accessories and other little design touches to customize the Defender to your liking. And finally, the 2022 Land Rover Defender has nearly every safety feature that is available on this SUV. Lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking, blind spot sensors, rear cross traffic alert, and even surround view cameras are all standard. The only option is adaptive cruise control. So this new generation of the Defender retains its off-road prowess. It also feels like a proper modern Land Rover product. It's not quite on the same level as the full-size Range Rover in terms of luxury, but it definitely feels more refined than the Jeep Wrangler or the Ford Bronco. Also, this is one of the most customizable Land Rover vehicles on sale today. You can have a Defender that is a mall crawler or one that is a rock crawler. The choice is yours. So with this new generation of the Defender, you can have both the family SUV and the off-road SUV all in one. If you want to know more about this 2022 Land Rover Defender, I wrote a more detailed review of it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely another SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.